Welcome back to episode 5, Match Day 28 reaction of the Footy and Chips podcast. Today we will be discussing the big title decider over the weekend that's gone. That was between Liverpool and Manchester City. We'll be talking about the Man U game. We'll be talking about Chelsea's the relegation battle as well. And obviously we'll have the other title pretenders, Arsenal. So since Josh is here, it's going to be a two-man show as a... Joshim's uh, subtitle sort of says it. We'll start off with the Man U game. Josh, do you want to run us through the Man U game first? First of all, yeah, big up to everyone that's watching. It's a two-man show, so let's go. We move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just talk me through the Man United game, how you guys were playing first half, how it went, then second half, what you thought about tactics, all that, all the juicy stuff. Yeah. Juicy stuff. There was no juicy thing about that match. Let me start <laughs> with that. But uh, it, it was the it was the early kick off twelve thirty on a Saturday. Um, the game start uh, the game yeah the game started well, but uh, do you know what? It was a dead game. There was both team were playing crap. There was no intensity. There was no motivation. There was nothing. Both team just had the ball and just not doing anything with it. Lucky United uh, had two penalties, I believe so. Yep, and they both oh, yeah. scored. Fernandez scored the Fernandez scored the first one, and he gave the second one to Rashford, which I thought is okay. And then apart from that, Everton are just completely crap. They don't, they mm -hmm. can't score, to save their life. They can't do anything. They, both team were misplacing passes. Both team were just playing out like it's a. The game doesn't mean nothing. There was no intensity. There was no nothing. We were the home team, but it felt like we were the away team. I think Everton had more position. We probably had more shots. But the game was a complete drag. Complete. I predicted a United uh, win. Yeah. I also hoped for. I ho also hoped for a clean sheet. So that was the main thing. I think on Onana played well. Mm -hmm. uh, the man of the man of the match was Johnny Evans, a 37 year old guy who came into this season as a backup defender, but ended up playing playing majority of the season because of injury to Varane and Maguire and Martinez. And he's been our best defender. And Saturday, well, he had a man-of-the-match performance. And uh, it was a comfortable game. Everton, we, I knew we were going to win. I knew Everton can't score to save their life. Uh, they're lucky that it's only United and no one else. But it was a drag game. If apart from any Man United or Everton fan that watched the game, I don't know what they were doing. No one else should have been watching that game apart from United and Everton fans because it was a complete waste of time. I ain't gonna lie. We needed the win. I don't second care. half was same. Second half was same. Second half. I don't know why you even watched it because it's the same no, old crap. Was the was the first half the same as the second half? The whole game was the same. Our 90 minutes, first half was the same as second half. No passion, no aggression, no tackling, no pressing, no nothing. It was just two penalties and that was done and dusted. Uh, I, I did watch the, the Everton game because, like I said, obviously in my predictions, I said, I think I said you guys are going to draw or lose potentially. I think I said draw maybe. 2-2 two, two draw. You said a draw. One, one draw. Yeah. Yeah, so I was watching it just to see. I didn't realise how bad Everton are. Like, they can't yeah. finish. What I would say, maybe you can agree or disagree with me on this. To yeah. me, it felt like Everton were trying to attack more. Like, to me, it seemed like Everton were at home. Like, they were counter... They were, like, uh, crossing the ball in. They were attacking more. And Man United were relying on the counter-attack. And obviously, yeah. two of the goals came from, like, a counter-attacking situation. Obviously, Ganacho got the the penalty because he was trying to dribble into the box, and yep. the second one, obviously, he got the same way as well. So, do you think yep. without those two situations, without those two penalties, do you think Man United, like, oh, like throughout the game, did Man United have any other clear cut chances, or without these two penalties, do you think it would have been a draw nil nil? Uh, Man United had other chances, but they can't finish. Mm. Fernandez hit the post, I think. Uh, Pickford made a yeah. couple of saves. So I believe if United yeah. didn't score them two penalties, they would have gone on to score at least one goal. Yeah, 
because they needed the win. But mm. yeah, they would have they would have won somehow. But lucky because they because uh, they were already really truly with the penalties. I don't think they went mm. the extra mile to get a third goal. They were just defending, and because Everton can't score, and Everton yeah, were missing yeah, Everton. chances. You're right. Everton was so poor. Like I'll be honest, yeah. even though as bad and poor Everton were, like you're saying, mm. like there was no passion, no drive. I didn't nah. see any of like you know like uh, Man United players. Like I didn't see like Bruno Fernandes or Rashford or like Casemiro, like someone taking the game by scruff of the net. Like there wasn't like a proper leader. Like oh, I'm gonna do the through balls or I'm mm. gonna run with the ball sixty yards then try and set someone up. Like the closest person was Ganacho that was trying to do something, and you know, yeah. even then, like he wasn't like a standout. You know, he didn't look all that. Yeah. yeah. No, you're but right. You're, you're interested. You're exactly. in what you're saying. So you're going. Mm-hmm. Now go on, go on. No, no. You're I was saying? say I was gonna say like obviously, we're saying Man United would have found a way. Both teams, the game was dead. Like mm-hmm. if you look at the stats, like everything's really evenly matched. Like, yep. if you look at it, like, 51.1 possession, 48, shots, 86, shots. This is surprising. Man United had 15 shots. Everton had 23. Everton did, but quite, they can't score. Yeah. Then passes, 488 to 444. Tackles, roughly the same. Man United had more clearances, 19 mm. to 7. Corners, Everton had 8 to 5. Offsides, Man United had more sit, uh, more offsides than thing. It just shows how close the game was. You know, like some of the basic stats, like everyone generally understands, but also some of the more uh, attacking or defending stats. It shows Everton were slightly better, like you know, especially with the shots thing. Like mm. overall shots had more shots. They had more corners. And clearances, Man United had more clearances, which okay. implies Everton were doing more of the attacking and shooting on goal for them to defend. No, you're exactly right. Uh, it felt like Everton were at home, United were away. Because we uh, we previously beat them at Goodison. I think it was 1-0 or something, I can't remember. So mm-hmm. it's like we were playing away, they were playing home. But that's how we, United, have been playing for the last 5-10 games, mm-hmm. playing over the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, game, but do you know what? Apart from the two United goals, no one else really bothered. No one else turned up, like you yeah. said. And I don't think they needed to because Everton don't have to. Everton can't finish. If Everton were a better team, say say Tottenham or I don't know yeah. uh, Newcastle, we would have at least draw. We would have conceded a hundred percent. We would have conceded yeah. if that was a Newcastle or uh, I don't know. Uh, Southampton, I don't know, Brighton, Chelsea, Brighton. we would have conceded. Yeah, one of yeah. them, it was at Aston, though. Yeah, Tottenham, Aston Villa, maybe West Ham. We would have conceded. Potentially. But with, but with United, Al, when, if they have a better opponent, like mm. if it was a Villa they, or they Tottenham, they, yeah. They, yeah, the game would have gone up. You understand the what I'm saying? Because, they, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, it's, because it's Everton and they're actually yeah. dead. That there's the reason why they're at the bottom. If they never had their points deduction, they would have been fighting relegation with Luton and Nottingham Forest. But uh, yeah, it was a drag. It was a drag game. United didn't need to do the extra to win the game. They've had the game done and dusted. It was just a matter of time before ninety minutes comes up and everyone goes home because it was it wasn't think, a good watch. It wasn't a good watch. What do you think about the the potential chance of? Uh, getting a Champions League spot. After the weekend's result where Tottenham batted Aston Villa 4-0 at the Villa Park, yeah. that's, that's I think, fifth is going to be hard to get. But hopefully, Villa drop points because I know Villa's got hard running and mm. we have, to, we yeah, have yeah. to play... I can't remember if we have to play Tottenham or not, but fifth place is looking hard now. Fifth. There's a gap between fifth and where United are. There's a massive... There's a gap. I mean, game bigger. Tottenham What's have the a game now? in hand. So if if Tottenham win the game in hand, uh, yeah. they go to fifty six points, and you guys are on fifty nine. So it's a nine point gap. However, 
Boom. Nine points is three games. Like all Tottenham have to do is lose a couple, draw a couple, and mm. you could be potentially in fourth spot. Fifth spot definitely more Fifth achievable. Spot. But yeah, because remember Aston Villa have been losing loads of like they've been losing like loads of the last few games. They've they've got like Una Emery is doing what he did at Arsenal when Arsenal yeah. bottled top four. He's literally doing that with Aston Villa now. He's mm-hmm. rerunning it back, which is really super weird. But yeah, he's he's doing the same thing, which is kind of you know a lot of people. I can't I can't believe everyone had Unai Emery to uh, be the next United manager or the Chelsea manager. Look at him. Can't even United yeah. beat Aston Villa. Remember that at Villa Park? Yeah. They never lost. They never lost to Villa they, Park. Uh, they not, yeah. Now look at them. They, They've never they, lost at Villa Park. Had, so, yeah. They had that really good form. And I remember they obviously they beat Arsenal one nil or two nil. Yeah. I can't remember. And they were going through this really good form, and suddenly that form's gone. And literally, like none of the basic principles of their footballing is showing. Like, you. yeah, you, you can't see anything right now. So I'm, I'm just quickly looking through. So yeah, they beat Arsenal one nil. At uh, Villa Park. They beat Man City at Villa Park 1-0 as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They were just going through this mad form. Then they drew to Bournemouth away, beat Tottenham 2-1 away. Yeah. And after that, they were doing okay. So what the 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 time it started getting bad for them was like the last game they lost 5-1 to hold on. Yeah. No, 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 hold on. December, December, December. Here we go, there we go. So they lost They lost to Newcastle 3-1 at uh, uh, Villa Park. No then way. they lost to Man United at Villa Park. They won Standard. against Fulham away. They beat Nottingham Forest. They beat Luton. And now they've lost to Tottenham at Villa Park again. So the home form is suddenly gonna be mad as well. Yeah. So like fifth spot is there for the taking, but I'm curious. To, it's gonna be interesting if Man United can catch up to Tottenham because Tottenham sometimes you know they're a bit whatever as well. So it'd be interesting to see that as well. No, you're right. I think uh, fourth place is not gettable. Fifth is achievable. I'm banking on a fifth place for United. And I know Tottenham has to play Arsenal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Tottenham got a couple of other big games. I think they have to play Chelsea, City. I can't remember. Hopefully, they drop points and fingers crossed we get the fifth fifth place. But that is if the English clubs do well in the Champions League. Remember that? That's not a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, fifth yeah, place yeah, 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 yeah. And fifth place. So, I, that fifth place, at least you get Europa League. So, there's some European football. And um, yeah. obviously, it's good for the business overall. Uh, TV revenue and maybe attracting some uh, players but apart from that obviously Champions League is what everyone really wants um, so I'll move on to the next one now this will be a Go quick on. one obviously we don't have the uh, Chelsea sort of panellists here with us today so I'm just we'll, we can both say something Chelsea won 3-2 today evening um, it looks like tighter than it is but they were winning 3-1 for a long period and mm-hmm. it seemed like Jacob Murphy scored in the last minute. A banger. He scored a banger. What's the goal? Did he? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Whose score good. was the best goal out of all of these? And Jacob Ramsey scored a banger. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's got a good goal. And also, uh, Modric's goal was quite nice. I think he put it through the legs of a defender and then went around the keeper. So it was a good goal. goal. Yeah, he went in the middle. I saw it on Twitter. He went in the middle. Yeah. He took uh, like one or two defenders on and he went around the keeper. To score the goal, so it'd be interesting to see. Like, I don't know, he doesn't score at all, really. He scores very, mm. like, <laughs> but, but one know, thing, one, th- one thing I don't understand you see how Pochettino and Eric Ten Hag are always under pressure, but look at look at Newcastle and Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe no. is never under pressure. Exactly. Do you know why he's so never? No, no, that's what I was gonna say. Do you think, like, I think everyone kind of now knows. But I'm of the opinion Eddie Howe is sacked in the summer. Yeah. Do you know what? He's getting away with it because of the English bias and English favouritism. Mm. Do you know what I mean? With all the 
Because remember, they got knocked out just like United from the Champions League coming fourth. Mm. And they got one game a week just like United. But look where they are and look where United are. But mm. Ten Hag and Ten Hag's had more pressure than Eddie Howe. And Eddie Howe, I think, has been longer at Ch- uh, Newcastle than Ten Hag at United. So I don't see why no one's uh, getting on Eddie Howe's back. But you're yeah, right. Yeah. I think it's I a thought, lot to I don't do. understand it. Say, yeah, I think it's a lot to do with the whole English, you know, there's a bit of favoritism there because definitely, you know, definitely you know, English, whatever. But at the same time, I think as well, um, everyone gave him a bit of leeway because obviously, you know, he doesn't yeah. come from like elite management, like yeah. he came from Bournemouth to Newcastle, so everyone just kept on saying, No, no, he's doing well, he's doing well. But obviously, considering how much Newcastle are trying to spend, they're trying to be the next man city, you know. The big mm. project, uh, they want to be winning Premier League, whatever. But it, yeah, I'd be surprised if he's in that thingy because that that squad. I know they've got a lot of injuries, but even then, mm. I think that team, the defense and attack, is good enough to get more draws and more wins because so, a lot yeah. of the time it's the performance. Like even when they came to Arsenal, and they lost like four five one or four one, wherever it was. Mm. I was surprised. Like I, I thought they're gonna give a much stronger, like defensive. They're gonna defend, defend, but they lost really easily. Especially like Gomares, Willek, Joe Linton. Um, yeah, Isaac, I think Joe Linton. I think yeah. Joe Linton's injured, if I'm not mistaken. He, Isaac he's, scored today. He's injured. He's injured. Yeah, Isaac. Scored, Isaac. Yeah. Isaac. Yeah. He, he's got a good goal. He, he's a clinical, clinical striker. Yeah. You know what? I really like him. And yeah. I'm not sure. Like, I think he's quite injury prone, but I think right now he's, he's finishing. Too good for he's Newcastle. Finishing. He's too good for Newcastle. He's too his good finishing for Newcastle. is just. If his finishing is so just injured, finesse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's in, if he wasn't so injury prone, I would love him at Arsenal. I think he's oh, hundred percent. At least I love him at United. I think he gets injured quite a lot. That's the only issue. So I'll yeah, have him at United. He, any, yeah. any day, but you know what? Al, one quick stat, yeah. one quick stat coming out of Chelsea. They were uh, yeah. talking about it on Sky Sports. Cole Palmer, mm-hmm. or sounds like to call it Cole Breezy, he's the first yeah. uh, player uh, to have uh, a goal and assist in five matches. So, goal and assist in five matches in this season. He's the first player. Okay. They were, yeah. So, so he. Goal so and he, assist. He scored a in goal, then he matches. assist someone. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in, in, in five matches. It's quite funny how he's like the best player and he's like one of the cheaper signings. Like the boy yeah, for only yeah, 35 yeah. million, but so far he's had more better performances and he's played better overall than Caicedo and Enzo, who are two, and Mudrik, who yeah. are three of the most expensive youngster signings. Or just signings in general. There were like 80 yeah. plus signings, all three of them, right? 80 million euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100. Do you know what? Uh, I think I was going to say, Chelsea's got a bright future, I think. I, I've watched them today. Gusto is really good. He plays really good. Yeah. With with Gusto uh, and uh, uh, Cole Palmer, they got a bright future. But Caicedo, the- man, he's rubbish. Caicedo. Really? He's rubbish. Really? Yeah, he he played okay. he played rubbish today. Check him, check his stats, check his touches. He was crap. Okay. I watched the game okay. at work, obviously, but he yeah. he's just. Do you know what? I'm know. surprised you say that because I thought he would be one of the better players, but yep, he's yep, what yep. He but what you're saying is true. Like I've, I just I I feel like with the right manager, maybe he is Pochettino. Yep. Who knows? But if, nah, no like, if, if it does go right. It's a young squad, yeah. and you know they're still learning. Who knows? It might become a really good team. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It could go the Not other now. way as well completely if the right person isn't able to uh, extract all of that talent, all of that you know, yeah, all of the talent that is in that team. If the right person mm. can't do it, it's such a waste, and it's such a waste of talent but as well talent. because all of them are talented. So it would yeah. be a shame if all of them, um, yeah, goes to race. But, Come on. I mean, yeah. they did win, but they don't move. They're still 11. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, they won, they won yeah. but they're still behind yeah. Newcastle, which is so funny. Yeah, yeah. 
if they win the game in hand, they they go, they jump to Brighton. Yeah, well, depending on yeah, goal Bright- difference. But they uh, yeah. they jump to eighth again potentially or well ninth maybe, but that is if they win the game in hand. Do so you know who the game in hand that. is with? Who? Arsenal. Chelsea. I think it's Arsenal. Chelsea. Oh, forget that then. <laughs> forget I that. I think it's Arsenal uh, because they were, they were meant to play um, Arsenal, but because of the FA Cup, they because they went through, yeah. it got delayed. So now Arsenal have to face Man City. So. For the next three weeks, Arsenal are not playing. But yeah, um, we move on to the Arsenal, Arsenal game. Go for it. Did you watch it? I watched it because uh, my, my brother was a Liverpool fan, so I watched it with him because obviously he wanted oh, really? Arsenal to drop points. <laughs> because I sent a picture. I sent. A, I sent a picture to the group because he's a Liverpool yeah. fan and he wanted. Yeah, he, yeah. he he wanted he wanted at least a draw. But I watched the game and I knew there's a goal coming. There's a it's a matter of time. Like, you tell me more about the game. Yeah, yeah. You tell me so, more. Um, I, I said I was expecting three nil, and I think we would have. I think Arsenal would have got the three nil if mm-hmm. after the Declan Rice goal, I think Trossard got fouled in the penalty box, but they didn't give it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. They didn't the penalties, give it. Yeah. So if yep, they yep. gave that penalty, it would have been two nil, and I think after yep. that, Arsenal would have had all the momentum and just would have scored. But because they didn't four, give yeah. Us, Arsenal, yeah, Arsenal just kept on trying, trying. And then, obviously, first of all, uh, Declan Rice goal. He, to me, Declan Rice, I think a lot, of, a lot of West Ham fans were already saying this, that Declan Rice is that world-class, you know, he's he's an elite player. It's just because he's that West Ham, you know, he doesn't look that good because West Ham is a shit team. But now, because obviously, he's at Arsenal under a better manager who knows him better, who knows how to get the best out of him plus he's playing with better players yeah players like yeah. you just saw a good delivery from a right back ben white is another player very underrated as a right back for me um his, his attacking isn't the best i would say his defending is really good but for me he's the most solid right back you could have like mm. he'll always be consistent and for me he's england's best right back if not best, second best. Kyle Walker for me is really good, obviously attacking wise. Trent is better attacking, but to me Ben White is overall more balanced. So for me, actually, yeah. I'll say I revise it. Second best or third, easy, and he should be on that, especially because he can play centre back. But Ben White had two assists, obviously that that cross, yeah, perfect yeah. cross, and Declan Rice. He was in the box, like a proper box-to-box midfielder, and he scored that goal, gave us the 1-0. And Arsenal were just peppering, like, um, Brentford. Just non-stop mm. attack, attack, attack. Like, literally, Arsenal, everyone was just camped mm. in Brentford's Brentford's half. And, yeah, yeah so, obviously, we, we should have had that Trossard goal. And, obviously, you can see mm. the stats, like, 71 versus 28. You know, six on uh, six shots on target. But look at the difference: seventeen shots versus their nine touches. Nine, yeah. Seven hundred thirty-eight to three hundred thirty-five. Five hundred sixty-four passes to two hundred twenty-six clearances. Look, Brentford made thirty-three mm. clearances compared yeah. to Arsenal seven. Arsenal had ten clearances. Like those stats, you get like it, it literally shows the dominance Arsenal had. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. I mean. I'll 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 make a comment on the mm-hmm. the uh, goal that Brentford scored and Ramsdale. But what did you make of the Ramsdale goal? Do you know what it is? It, it's expected. If a guy doesn't play for such a long time and if he's put in, you're bound to get mistakes out of him. But yeah. uh, but you know what? He he made quite a lot of good saves in the second half. One or two saves. Yeah. So he so he kept, so he I think he made up for it more than made up for the mistake. Uh, but I think he's a good keeper anyway, and uh, yeah. he's, he's he's a really good backup keeper, really good backup keeper. Yeah, yeah but, I think uh, in the summer, yeah, go on. No, in the summer, uh, he's probably going to be leaving, uh, moving, uh, looking yeah. to leave because you can't have two number ones at a yeah. club. There's no way you can have that. Yeah, totally agree. I think he's hundred percent 
he's a number one keeper for any other yeah, team. Yeah, definitely. Type. Definitely. Number one. Definitely. Uh, his goal is just unfortunate. It's just one of those things. Yeah, it like, happens. Happens. It's unfortunate. And Look. the worst part is that game was hard. It wasn't like, yeah. oh, yeah, after he made the mistake, Arsenal scored three or four goals. Arsenal mm. had to work really hard to get that goal to make up for the mistake. That was another mistake. issue. But he the made a, quite a lot of good... He made two or three yeah, good yeah, saves yeah. in the second half. So he did. In the second half, obviously, naturally, if, if a team is attacking, high line, pressing, continuously attacking, obviously, mm. there's a lot of space behind the back and during counter-attacks or... Not even counter attacks, but imagine if Arsenal try and do a pass and Brentford clear it. Sometimes those accidental clearances uh, starts in. a counter attack. Yeah. yeah. And do you, remember, do you remember? Did you see that shot from Tony? Like he was like, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah,
he's playing good right now and that's what you need. Forget how much you paid for him. He's getting the goals for you guys. He might be the push to for the title, that extra push from yeah. last season. So, you know what I mean? I say Chelsea, Chelsea are dumb. Because they could Chelsea could have done with him right now. Yeah. Chelsea yeah, could have yeah, done with yeah. him right now. The, the, but, the uh, one thing I like about him is the fact that he can play as a striker and midfielder. So, for example, when he was a, when he was playing striker yesterday, when he was playing that striking role, what mm. Arsenal did was a, I think... Play to strength. Hold on. I, give me a second. I'll tell you who they took off. Party. They took off Jorginho. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They put Declan Rice in midfield, like Jorginho's role. So he's not running around as much, just more cover. Odegaard was there and Kai Havertz was there and Jesus played as the striker. So obviously once he's played striking, he can now come in midfield and make those late runs into the box. So he's not the main focus. And that could potentially confuse defenders as well. Because one minute he's yep. playing striker and suddenly, like halfway through the second half, he's now suddenly playing as a midfielder. So he's making different kind of runs, his different positioning. That's what I like about him, the fact that he's got that versatility and he's way more attack-minded than like older guys. You can tell he's, he likes to be outside the box near the cam area, that the through balls, you know, the pre-assist to the assist, all that kind of stuff. Kai Harvitz, to me, he's... He's more of that player. He's looking for the cross to get on to finish a tap in or take a shot or make a late run. So I think Arsenal are definitely uh, benefiting from that kind of player right now. But it was a tight game, though, man. Brentford, like they defended like hell. I've no like I I would definitely say this is probably one of the more tougher teams we faced at the Emirates. Because they were just defending like really well, and obviously they had a lot of luck as well on their side because some of those clearances, goal line clearances. No, um, do you want to say any last words on that? No, I knew Arsenal were going to win. It was a matter of time uh, till they scored. Mm. So mm. I don't know what Chelsea, what Sal's was predicting, Arsenal to lose. I think three <laughs> one or something. He said they, they must be bottom. smoking something. <laughs> but yeah, do you know what? I, you know what? Because none of them other mans are here, I'll tell you straight. Declan Rice is probably the buy of the season. If for my for my point of view, what do you think? I think he's definitely improved us. He's definitely made us look solid, and he's one of those players. He's come in and he has it like he didn't need time to adjust because obviously he yeah, was yeah. already in the prem. Uh, you think, oh yeah, he's used to prem football, but. For example, look at Nunez from Wolves, mm. the midfielder, right? He was doing okay. He was doing well at Wolves. For City, yeah. He went to Man City, but now he's not even getting games. Look at Calvin Phillips. I think he's injured. I think he's injured. He got injured last game. Even now, even when he was him. fit, he, he wasn't getting games. Look, look at, at Kovacic. Phillips. Look at Kovacic. Look yeah, at Kovacic. Kovacic as well. He was a starter for Chelsea. He goes to Man City because of the style or whatever the way they play. The manager either can't get it right or the player can't get it right. With Declan Rice, you can't say either way. Arteta's got him working and he's got it working. And he's looked even better because he's scoring goals now for us. Yeah, but Declan I, Rice. I if, he wins, if he wins a trophy... He, he has to be the buyer this season. No, definitely. I think he is right now. I think he is, but you know, like winning a trophy, like just further caps proves all, your yeah. case. Yeah, exactly. Caps it off. But even if he doesn't, he's still like, if Man City win it, they haven't bought anyone to help them win it. They just already had a good team in it. Uh, with Liverpool, there's a chance if they win it. Um, I don't know. It could be because Van Dyke was playing. You know, he helped mm. the defence, led the defence, or it could be Salah. But again, they're already there. It's it's not necessarily the they're new players. Proven, yeah. yeah, kind of. So it'd be interesting to see, like, who, what the subscribers or the viewers think who the buy of the season is. So put a comment in there. Or, or who the, the buy of the yeah. season is so far.
so far anyway. So far he has to be Declan Rice because not everyone thought he's he can't he's not an attacking player. Everyone thought he's a defensive mm. player. It's just mm. David Moore is held him back. I don't know if you know yeah. David Moore is held him back. Now that he's playing under Arteta, Arteta's letting go. So now he's an attacking yeah. player. So he's a box to box player. Oh, definitely. No, so no. yes, for now, for now, it's Declan Rice. Hundred percent agree. So now we are going to go on to the big match here, yeah? and big that game. was the big boy game. Yeah, <laughs> bro, I did say one one because I had that. I felt that energy. And do you remember in the preview I was saying there's something about Harland, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yep, yep. he's not been scoring. And obviously, Sal was saying, nah, he scored five goals. I said, nah, past few games, even in the Man United derby, in the Man United derby, at, at the Etihad, this Man United team, they're not very good. He just about scored because Man United, like, passed the ball to him in the yep, penalty yep, box. Yep, yep. Assisted him, yeah. Have scored. Exactly. They, they spoon-fed him. This game, again, like, to me, Harlan just kind of disappeared. Like, he wasn't there, like... He had that one-on-one -on -one chance with Van Dijk and he wasn't able to take advantage of it. Van Dijk kind of ushered him away. But I'll, I'll, I'll say my piece first on this. You go first, yeah. Uh, Man City first half were good. I think they just about were the better team on the first half. Just about. But second half, the way Liverpool dominated, that, uh, dominated Man City you would have thought it was Arsenal, Brentford, Liverpool were hammering Man City, man. I was shocked, especially considering obviously Salah came on late. But like the the midfield, like obviously we, I was expecting a lot more injuries, but the team wasn't too bad. Like Gomez, still a like Premier League defender. I think Kwanzaa, I have to say, he played wicked. Mm. Jarrell Kwanzaa, I think Van Dijk. Obviously helped him a lot, but I think if yep. he keeps playing the way he's playing, like like the future of Liverpool's defense, Kanate and Kwanza, maybe that might be it. Who knows? If he keeps playing like this, Connor Bradley, he, you know, he played really well as well. Like really well. Mm. Like Doku didn't cause him much trouble after he came on, and even um, I think between Foden, I think Alvarez had some chances. And was giving him some trouble, but he wasn't to the point where Alvarez left him for dead and he's got a mm. shot on target all by himself, like one on one chance. He was never that bad. So, you know, he did a good job. Like Dominic Sabasly, whatever his name is, he was on like Callister, yeah. All like the 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 ideal three midfielders that you Liverpool would have wanted, they were fit. So they had a strong yep. midfield. The up front was strong as well. Nunes, Elliot, Diaz. Oh man, yeah. I, I, I won't talk about Diaz. I'll let you talk about him. But Liverpool, I think they outperformed massively. The like it's if Liverpool win, they deserve to win it, obviously. But yep. Man City on the performance they gave, considering the advantage they had. If they had mm. beaten Liverpool in this slight, slightly weaker side, they needed to take advantage and they simply couldn't. Yep. But yeah, um, I'll let you go and talk about whether it's the first half or second half, what you want to say. Do you know what? Uh, I agree with you. See, it started really well. Uh, they obviously scored the goal. But do you know what, where, 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 what my say is? I think uh, Edison should have been sent off. That penalty on, uh, on uh, Nunes. No, that was no, a red card. A he should have been no, off. I, no, I think there's a rule now when a keeper makes a what foul, rule, double jeopardy rule, like the keepers can't. So you get can't a give a penalty, penalty and a foul. What? Yo, no, no, you no, can't you give can a red give card a and a penalty. Yeah, yeah. So that's why he got a yellow card and a penalty. That, that's what I. Think if that was anywhere else on the pitch, that's a red. Yeah, no, no. He should have been I, off. Maybe. But he either way, no, he got I, I watched the he, game. He got injured. He got injured. But you know what? The other keeper is really good as well. Otomendi or whatever his he's name okay. is. He's okay. Yeah, he, he made but, yeah, going, well. going back, I think that should have been a red card. And uh, if, uh, they scored the penalty. Second half, their man of chances, Luis Diaz, miss. 
the one on one that Salah gave for him through the middle, the the side foot shot. He should have buried at least two of them. There were easy easy chances for a player like him. He should have at least got two. All right. Uh, Tell me about those chances. What, what you know? What uh, if you, if that was Salah at the end, if that was Jota, mm-hmm. or so if that was David Lewis, so if that was uh, Lewis giving it to Salah, Salah would have buried them. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's the difference. That's the difference. But, but don't uh, you think Diaz is experienced enough? Like Diaz, he should. Like you know what? Diaz is a really good player. Jota would have scored for sure. Diaz would normally yeah. score. He put, it's just not his day on the day. But the thing is, was you know when um, when Doku came on, is it Doku? He came on. Yeah. He should have been sent off as well. That's uh, Caesar kick on Caesar kick for on the, the Liverpool uh, player. For the tackle, Ma- Ma- McAllister, sorry. Yeah, Ma- that should have been ball. another red card. Yeah. Uh, do you know one thing I don't understand? Oh yeah? yeah. Maybe uh, viewers can back me up. Man City are a good team. They don't need. VAR and ref to back them. It's like they got 12th man. They, yeah. they don't need the refs backing. Refs, you know, I remember when United played City and then uh, they gave a penalty to City because Erasmus pulled him back. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. Such a soft penalty. And then yeah, the yeah. following week, it happened again and they didn't they didn't give yeah. it. So I feel like so, the refs are on Man City's side. Trust no, no, me no, that. that's fine. The, the, you're right. VAR should have picked those out. There's two points I have on those here. If you're relying on VAR to help you win a game, like, you're not good enough to win. You Like, sometimes you need that luck, you're right. Mm. But you need to play to a level where you need to win without VAR because you can't trust but. VAR. Just like you can't... Before VAR, it was you can't rely on refs to give you penalty. Because mm. then they might not give some of these dodgy penalties, especially like do you remember, like n- like a lot of teams would never get penalty in Old Trafford. It was just yeah, a yeah, thing. yeah. So th- this is what I mean. You you can't rely, but that was so but obvious. I, 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 know what I think, so but obvious. you know what? I think it's that same referee. If I'm not mistaken, maybe you can back me up. It's that same referee. Uh, mm. I think when City played Arsenal, is it mm. or City? Is it the same referee? Yeah. I think it's the same one. And he, he didn't give City or he didn't give Arsenal or someone a penalty or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. the same referee. It's, there's something going on between City that and referee also goes to the That referee also goes to the Middle East to referee games. Yeah, and comes well. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he, yeah he's always so, managing City. But the second thing so, is, yeah. did you see De Bruyne mm-hmm. when he got substituted? Yeah, I'll give it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was fuming. Yeah. He was he fuming. Was fuming. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know what? With me, De Bruyne, he's still quality. Like, you can see when he gets on the ball, some of the things he was doing, you can sell. Definitely one of the elite players, better players on that pitch. But one of the things I did notice for me, I felt like he wasn't helping Man City in the running around. And obviously, yeah. all of Pep teams, everyone needs to run around. Tackle from the front, pressure, all of that press. And that could be he's like thirty three or something or thirty two now, isn't he? So he's quite yeah. I think yeah. It's the age thing, and you know he's come back from injury. So Pep was, I think maybe he was trying to save him, get Protect more him. fresh legs on. And Doku obviously is, is that. But Doku is not two, good, man. Those two chances Diaz had for me is unforgivable. He needed to yep, finish yep, them. Yep. He's, he's not Nelly. He's not Martinelli. He's not Saka. He's not Mudrik. He's a twenty seven year old. Playing for Liverpool, he's meant to be. He's not Rasmus, yeah. You know, yeah, like the finished article. He needed to. Do you know what? Liverpool should have won. One, second one, he should have, hundred percent. Then the Doku penalty, yeah, it is a penalty. Anywhere else, oh, hundred percent penalty. He's a kick. He is what. He is what. But you know what? Looking, looking to that ref and City. Trust me. Mm. Look into the reference. Uh, man, there's. I'm sure there is something there, man. Because there's. So, no, nah, he's there he's always, always refereeing city no, games. But it's, it's, there's always these dodgy decisions. Always dodgy decisions. But more than once. More than once, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Always, man. Do you know what? They, they don't need. Oh, sorry. But you're going back. Oh, you're right. Harlan was missing again. Foden had an off day. 
And I think Haaland is still rusty. He's come back from injury. I think he's still rusty. Well, yeah. I, look, the, the, the thing is, yeah, my issue is one game he's scoring five goals against Luton and you're saying he's back, he's going to score, and then he goes missing. So, like, and this is my issue. Like, well, is he injured or has he scored five goals and he's on form and he's going to score again now? So that's my only issue. Like, you can't have it both ways. To me, it seems like, like you know, like um, like Rooney, Ronaldo, Henri, they could make a goal. Yeah. Like they didn't need anyone. Sometimes they could make a goal for themselves. For themselves, yeah. Yeah, and for example, and I'll give you this one against an elite defender, Van Dijk is elite defender. Um, Haaland is elite de- elite striker or striker. Just Let's just say that. Do you remember that one-on-one chance? It was him and Van Dyke, and they were both mm. literally. That is your moment now, yeah. Yeah. To do something, do you get me? And it was a shot from his with his left foot, his his preferred foot, and mm. he hit it at the keeper. He did like he did yeah, straight at the, the keeper. keeper. That was his chance to do something, and he couldn't get past Van Dyke. And sometimes people say Van Dyke has gone past it. He just stopped, you know, Harlan, like, on a one-on-one situation. So, I don't know. It, but you know yeah. what? You know, with Harlan, if he doesn't score, he doesn't do nothing else. You know that, ain't it? Well, if, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you know, Henri, it, Rooney, they could assist. Yeah, yeah, they make chances. They make goals out of nothing. Right? To me, like, I, I, I can't... Maybe he has, but remember, like, Henri used to score from outside the box all the time. Yeah, 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 Rooney, yeah. Like, they Bangers, could score. yeah. Anywhere on the pitch, generally, like 20, 30 yards, inside the box, outside the box, tapping, cross, you name it. He, to me, seems like a proper penalty box finisher. Like, he has to be in the box near the six yard. And if if someone like Foden or Kevin De Bruyne isn't feeding the ball into him... He's, it's not his day. Yeah. Long day for him. He needs, you're right, he needs Foden, he needs De Bruyne. Can't do it by himself. And he definitely can't do it with Doku. Because Doku, I don't know, man. He's dead as well. Yeah. Lukaku's, yeah. Lukaku's brother from Belgium. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, yeah, Liverpool should have won. Liverpool should have won. They'll be more. They'll be the more disappointed out of both. City will be happy if they got a point. Oh, yeah. Of course, City will be happy. And Liverpool... Did you see Klopp was fuming? Klopp was fuming at Southgate. He was yeah, calling yeah, Southgate out. That. I didn't know. Yeah, go on. Why was well, he fuming at Southgate? Well, he wasn't fuming. He was just calling at Southgate because he believes Gomez he should have uh, be in the England squad by now. And oh, he's he should have been selected. Okay. And he and he's not getting a look at. So indirectly, okay. uh, South he was having a go at South goal, Southgate. Sorry. Okay. All but right. it was quite funny. It was quite funny. Yeah. So. But, we, with all of those results now, obviously Arsenal go on top, the joint top yep. with Liverpool, but because of Arsenal's goal difference being uh, better, um, there are seven points, uh, seven goals uh, clear of Liverpool, takes them to, um, mm-hmm. to the top with 64 points, Liverpool 64 yep. points, 39 goals, obviously Man City 63 with plus 35, and then we have the rest of the teams. Now, Obviously, we've got some weekend games coming up as well, which would be interesting, but hopefully we discuss it on a Thursday pod. And those games... Are, well, I think I mean, FA Cup on weekend. I lie. No, um, I should lie. I, I lie, sorry. We have Champions League tomorrow. Obviously, oh, Arsenal yeah. got that big game against Porto. So we oh, might do a yeah. round up. Not might. We will probably do a round up depending on what happens. So who knows? And obviously, Man C, I think they were already winning 4 1 or 3 1 from the first day. Oh, so forget that. They should be yeah, forget they should that. Be yeah. So it's really the Arsenal game that's the more uh, big game because they have a chance of potentially being knocked out. Because Is it tomorrow or Wednesday? Tomorrow, 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 Tuesday, Tuesday. No way. So, Porto home, yeah? yeah? Yeah, Porto home, Porto home. So 16th of March, I think after this, is the FA Cup or international break? I always get confused. No, it's FA Cup this weekend for most of the teams. You know, in the FA Cup this weekend. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got the FA Cup games then. Then, then the weekend, uh, 16th of March, I think the Prem's back. 
and we got these games. Uh, I, think, I think it's a mixture of weekend and premiership, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, so Chelsea Chelsea got Burnley on the 30th of March. I think it's FA Cup, then international break. Uh, yep, in yep, yep. And then, um, then it's new. Uh, the first game, Chelsea playing Burnley through a prop kickoff. We've got Manu away at Brentford. So it'd be interesting Ooh. to see how that game goes on. Brentford, um, I don't know if the players will come back or not uh, because they do have a lot of injuries in the defence. So who knows how hard that game will be for Man United. Liverpool <laughs> um, have Brighton at home with the injuries coming back. So they should be OK. But then we have the Super Sunday. Arsenal oh, City. City versus City. And depending how that goes, who knows? I mean, if Arsenal win, beat Man City, oh, maybe then it's they Arsenal knock. for the title. Then you could potentially, obviously, put Man City further down, meaning Arsenal and Liverpool now have to fight it out because Liverpool yeah. have the easier games, I think, personally. And obviously, yeah, but I mean, even Arsenal, like even after that, Arsenal have to play at some point, Arsenal have to play Chelsea at home and Man United, even Brighton away. It's going to be hard, but Brighton's yeah, going to be hard. All about that. So keep, please, watching the pod, keep us, um, please comment. Um, you know, leave your comments and let us know what you think, what we've been discussing, our opinions, what you thought of the games as well. And, you know, was how how bad was that miss for Diaz? Uh, as a player hmm. of his stature, considering he's 27, should he have, you know, finished those goals? Been, Are Man United ever going to get better? Like, the winning, the winning 2-0, but like, it seems like from what we've discussed, they're not getting any better. You know, even Everton somehow are looking better than them or have better stats than them. Is this, you know, a turning point for Chelsea? Who knows? Mm. Uh, we'll see next week in the FA Cup. And, you know, that could be their respite. And Liverpool, where do they go from here? Like, uh, they drew at home. Do they now get all of their players back fit and they keep going? They've got Europa League as well. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Keep watching us. Hopefully Thursday we will have uh, our new pod out to review the Champions League games and um, to give some weekend predictions. Even if it is FA Cup, we'll uh, review those games potentially. Josh, do you want to uh, say your bit and do your usual thing? Yeah, just just what uh, just a quick one. Uh, do you know what? If United play the way they're playing, they'll get smashed by Liverpool like in the FA Cup. But it's still a week to go, so. Within this week, hopefully, everyone should be better. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, hopefully, next week we should have the rest of the man's back. If not, me and I are still here. But yeah, we'll keep it real. And one show. more thing. Two yeah, two. And one more thing, Al, to all the viewers that are watching Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs>